Wonder Women of Journalism I never thought I would see the federal government threaten a journalist with prison for failing to give up a political source, this political source being embarrassing to the Biden administration and not a lethal threat to national security. All they needed to do was flip over our justice system to serve one political party for this to happen. I was reading an article on how the country of Taiwan was expressing sympathy for the Uyghurs in China. The human rights crisis foreshadows Taiwan's future under PRC control. To date, the Chinese government has refrained from disclosing the exact number of Uyghurs and other Muslims arbitrarily detained in its concentration camps. The Secretary of Taiwan stated, Like the air we breathe, it is often difficult to perceive the existence of freedom. However, once freedom is lost, it will never return. Former CBS News reporter Catherine Harridge knows all about the struggle for freedom. The reporter fighting for America's free press. Catherine Harridge faces a daily $800 fine for refusing to give up her sources to a federal judge. This week, she went to Congress to defend the First Amendment. Focus again on the importance of protecting reporter sources and the vital safeguards provided by the Press Act. As you know, in February, I was held in contempt of court for refusing to disclose my confidential sources on a national security story. I think my current situation can help put the importance of the Press Act into context. One of our children recently asked me if I would go to jail if we would lose our house, and if we would lose our family savings to protect my reporting sources. I wanted to answer that in this United States where we say we value democracy and the role of a vibrant and free press, that it was impossible, but I could not offer that assurance. The Bipartisan Press Act, which came out of this House committee, would put an end to the sort of legal jeopardy that I have experienced firsthand in the federal courts. And without the legislation, more journalists will run the uncertainty of the contempt gauntlet in the future. At the center of this fight is Catherine Harris, one of the most respected national security reporters in Washington. In February, she was abruptly fired from CBS News during a round of layoffs. This was strange, considering that Harris is a scoop getter. She and her team first broke the story on how Al-Qaeda's English language recruiter was in contact with the 9-11 hijackers, and that Hunter Biden's laptop was authentic and in the custody of the FBI. What made it even more alarming was that her notes and files at CBS News, which contained information on her sources, were seized by her former employer. CBS even locked her out of her own office. But as just one problem was resolved, Harridge faced another threat, in a separate civil lawsuit, listen to that carefully, the government filing civil lawsuits against a journalist. This is incredible. A federal judge found her in contempt of court for refusing to disclose her sources in her investigation into a taxpayer-funded school in Virginia run by a woman with alleged links to the Chinese military. In both cases, Harridge's promise to protect her sources was threatened. In both cases, still ongoing, she refused to break that promise. So what happened here? Someone at the Biden White House, either a lowly intern, one of Biden's White House lawyers, or President Joe Biden himself, called up the president of CBS News and said, because of our ongoing service to the Chinese Communist Party, here in the Biden administration, we don't like Catherine Harridge investigating someone with links to the Chinese military. Would you mind, President of CBS News, firing this journalist? And if you could, seize all of her records and then tell us what her sources are so that we can track down the traitor to the People's Republic of China. I mean, the traitor to the United States of America. This is incredible for several reasons. One is, the U.S. government should have no business calling up a news agency and asking or demanding that a, a top journalist be fired. Had Donald Trump done this as president, 
the news agency in question would have immediately held a press conference announcing this scheme to the entire world. But Joe Biden does this, and not only does the president of CBS News not go public with this demand from the Biden White House, but the CBS president actually carries out the order. But then the Biden White House went further. They had the Department of Justice direct federal judges to go after this reporter and holding her in contempt of court for refusing to disclose her sources. Most reporters don't have $800 a day to pay fines. So this was clearly the intimidation by the powerful against someone with no power, a fired investigative journalist. Of $800 per day for your refusal to disclose your sources. This is deeply concerning, and what's more concerning, you are not the first in an, in an article related to your case, the Washington Post reported how in 2005, five national reporters were held in contempt and levied fines of $500 per day. And in 2008, a USA Today reporter was held in contempt and faced daily fines of $5,000. All of these instances where reporters upheld their journalistic integrity and protected their sources to ensure good reporting for the American people only to face rebuke and heavy-handed enforcement by the courts, which are intended to protect the First Amendment. Ms. Harridge, how fundamental to reporting is the protection of your sources? Congresswoman, I have not lost a night's sleep about my decision to protect my confidential sources. That is the core of who I am as a journalist. I am facing contempt fines because I am upholding the most basic principle of journalism. If you cannot offer a source a promise of confidentiality as a journalist, your toolbox is empty. No whistleblower is coming forward, no government official with evidence of misconduct or corruption. And what that means is that it interrupts the free flow of information to the public. And as we all recognized, Journalism is about an informed electorate, which is the bedrock of our democracy. If you had asked me 37 years ago when I started working that I would be in the federal courts living a legal nightmare to protect my sources, I would never have believed it. I told you a story about my son. I'd like to finish it. At the end of the conversation, he said, Mom, you do what it takes. I've got your back. And I thought if a teenager understands how sacred this pledge is for every journalist, certainly Congress can pass the Press Act and codify these guarantees that will prevent cases like mine in the future. Thank you. Female reporters who have had the Obama-Biden administration intimidate and order their firings. But in 2011, you reported on the Obama administration's Operation Fast and Furious operation in which ATF purposely allowed licensed firearm dealers to sell weapons to Ill illegal straw bars. Were confidential sources and, important, and, and information critical to informing the pub public about that scandal? Yes. Would you have been able to shed light on the federal government selling weapons, including grenade launchers and anti-aircraft weapons, to the Mexican drug cartels without guaranteeing confidentiality of your sources? It would have been tough. There would have been some something to report, but not what we ended up reporting. And when you were reporting on the security lapses in the 2012 Benghazi embassy attack, do you think you would have been able to shed light on the federal government's failure to maintain embassy security without guaranteeing confidentiality of your sources? Some of it, yes, but some of it, no. Do you, like me, believe it's important for the American people to be informed of these things, as long, along with waste, fraud, and abuse by the federal government, and we should do what we can to ensure robust media scrutiny of those government officials? Yes. Even if that includes members of Congress? Right. Does the status quo where sources need to depend on a reporter and their outlet's financial tolerance or physical tolerance for contempt punishment is a, 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 equate to a functional, sensible system? No, and, and one quick example, a lot of times a source will end up going on the record, which is preferable, mm -hmm. but you can't begin the conversation many times if you can't start out by telling him as you begin to talk that he's not going to be identified yet. Does the current system have a chilling effect on potential confidential sources and whistleblowers? Yes. If we pass the Press Act, you talked a little bit about the Press Act and uh, where you think it's deficient and whatever, but you agree it would be helpful at least. It seems like it would be helpful. You know, I just, 
in the last minute and 30 seconds, I think we can deal with this. I think there's certain things that we have to recognize. I'm a former criminal def defense attorney. Uh, confidentiality with my clients is absolutely essential in order to deal with those things. And I think there's there are a lot of different similarities, but you have to be as mentally tough as anybody to be an investigative reporter. And we're sitting here right now talking about these things. At the same time, we got a letter from the DOJ saying that they can't release an audio tape after they've already given us the transcript from a computer where it was where it was tried to be erased but only found later because it would have a chilling effect on potential witnesses coming forward to talk about a crime. That's what the letter said. And at the same time, we have a DOJ going to investigative reporters saying, I know you guaranteed these people confidentiality to report against their government doing something bad against the US citizens, but I am going to force you to expose that or I'm gonna hold you in civil contempt, criminal contempt, or all of those things. Does that seem a little bit hypocritical to you, Ms. Atkinson? There are many things that seem to be double standard-ish, one way for them and another way for us. I mean, they, they're literally saying we can't reduce, we can't release something because otherwise we won't ever be able to investigate anything again, which by the way is patently false, but also at the same time when they don't like something any of you all are writing right, left, center, conservative, liberal, they say, I wanna know who your source is. I get it. I really am in awe of watching these smart, intelligent, patriotic women defend themselves and the integrity of their line of work in the face of oppressive government run largely by progressive, white, liberal, Democrat men. Women are under attack here by the very political party that claims to protect and represent women. And from what the ladies said yesterday, I felt I was watching a Wonder Woman or two testify. Well done, ladies. Strong, stunning, and the best of what America can be. Thank you. Thank you.